Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Mad Night. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Washington Redskins and the Chicago Bears. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, is the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And that's going to be incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target, and it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass incomplete. He finds his target. It's Crowder. It'll be a red skin first down as Smith hits Crowder. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence. Supreme. Back live, Charles Davis to my right. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Redskin football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. Crowder's got it over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first down, it's Smith. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Richardson. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. To the air again, Smith. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. well. I have to say that was a surprise call on third and inches. I thought they'd try and run the football there, but you got to believe they thought they'd surprise the defense and pick up something downfield, but that one goes incomplete. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, Trubisky. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. A very solid gain of 27. And you can almost feel Trubisky saying, let's get to the line and hurry up. On first and ten, it's Trubisky. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This one from 46 yards out. And Parkey's kick it. We now proceed to the start of the second half. So we come upon halftime here at Soldier Field with the Bears out in front. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. 
The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. They go with Howard again. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And that's going to leave them with just one timeout remaining still in the third quarter. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them. We'll be back. On first down, they run with Howard. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. So, boy, that's already the third they burn here. They are out of timeouts now before we've even hit the fourth quarter. This is Howard on second down. Gets around him. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Ten yards is the pickup there, and that should just about put a bow on this one. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. Throwing on first is Wins. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Open man left side is Wallace complete. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. 
The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. And it's taken in at the nine. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. Go on the ball. On the ball. The former second round pick. This is Joe Mixon. And now running right through it. And he's brought down after a good Go game. On the ball. That burst good for 20 and a first down. First down. Clock rolling. From midfield here, Dalton. Open man is Uzama. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Dalton throwing on second down. Flush to his right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Now a timeout called with three seconds to go. And, of course, they're in field goal range in the final seconds of this first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash, this from 33. And Bullock, and now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. And that's going to leave them with just one timeout remaining still in the third quarter. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them. We'll be back. Mixon with a first down carry. And some space here. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. So, boy, that's already the third they burn here. They are out of timeouts now before we've even hit the fourth quarter. This is Mixon. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On second down, here's Mixon. It'll go as a gain of 12, and that should just about wrap this one up. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Not running. Dalton wants to throw. And he fends him off. Man alive. And they finally catch up to him and take him down. Jeez, where was he going? A huge loss there. Fletcher Cox. 
He's the one that's going to get credit for the sack here. This is Mad. All right, Coach, thank you. There's a look at New Era Field here in Orchard Park, New York. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Play fake here on first down. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And they've got it here with a first down. Throwing now is Mahomes. Trying to find his tight end, Kelsey, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 23. It's accelerating, and off he goes. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. Kelsey, the intended receiver there. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. They'll give it to him up the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. And Hauschka's kick it an abbreviated halftime show as we get rolling to quarter three. So we reach halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. Come the Bills now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it because they're counting on those points. In today's NFL, let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? Back to the ground on first down. Again, Ivory. 
Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And that's going to leave him with just one timeout remaining still in the third quarter. We'll see if that comes back to haunt him. We'll be back. On second down, Ivory. And some room to run now. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 46. And he's brought down. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. All right, here we go. 319! 319! Back now in Buffalo. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On first down, this is Ivory. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee, and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the New York Giants and the Denver Broncos. And you combine a big leg with a mile high air. There's the outcome. This will sail out of the end zone for a touchback. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. Throwing on first down is Manning. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he's brought down after a good gain. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So Manning to Beckham in this defense, they better hone in on that connection. It's almost like an electrical charge for him, isn't it? When he catches the first one, I'm talking about OBJ. He just goes to the hole and says, more, more, more. And really, he, he's just one of those guys that once he gets going, look out. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with a football here as we begin quarter number two. But they face a second and long to start things out. From midfield, here's Manning. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Todd Davis, and they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Hey, go, 
Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I mean, you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh boy, you wish you hadn't. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for the defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. And McManus able to... All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. So we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of the team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to a stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. There's Freeman. Shrugs him off. A second point. And nothing but daylight ahead. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 38. This is Freeman on first and 10. Pushes him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still. Welcome back now to Denver. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On second down, Freeman. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 14 there, and that should be enough to get him home free. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. And we just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Olivier Vernon brings him down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Everybody, it's the coach. And 
And coach, we come at you from the shores of Lake Erie. EA Sports has the coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Trubisky to throw on second. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Christian Kirksey in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. They'll run it in out of the gun. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Call it a gain of four, but not enough. The punt team going to need to be summoned here on fourth down. So on fourth down, on is the punter Pat O'Donnell to kick it away. Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. That's taken on the 25. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And control of the football. Switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. On first down, it's Taylor. Flushed out right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And just like that, on we head to half number two. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. There are zero points on the scoreboard for either side. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments were made. The defenses have obviously been great. So if you like defense, this is a classic game. This is what you're looking for. But now you're trying to figure out how to gain any type of an advantage on offense. Is it through a big chunk play that they haven't seen before? Or is it just running your regular offense and running it better, trying to create an opportunity? We'll see which avenue they choose to go down. On second down, Taylor's throw incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. Remember... Quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. Throw left side complete. That's Gordon. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. And we're back now here in Cleveland as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. First down, a run with high. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. They run again with Hyde on first. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And now the Bears going to signal for another timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. On second down, Hyde. 
And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. They'll run it. Here's Hyde. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. It's a pickup of three, but it brings up what will be an interesting fourth and one. When a good play is made on defense, oftentimes leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned, all the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. going to get the kick off in time and here in overtime if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown it's over if they don't we can still have some more football that's exactly right if they go down and kick a field goal the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game if both teams kick field goals the next team to score wins but if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score the game is over at that point. Nothing between these two teams for four quarters. Here we go to begin overtime. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime... That gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. They go counter with Howard. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. On third down, Trubisky. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Taken from just outside the 30. Oh, he slipped right by him. Fancy footwork in midfield. He takes a touchdown saving tackle to bring him down as he goes 32 yards on the return. And the Browns have a short field in front of him now as they take over first and 10. They go play action here on first down. He's going to walk on deep left. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. Now we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. 
Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Trevor Davis now to return. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. now on first down and gets it over the middle to Cobb and he'll get to the 29 yard line brought down there the completion good for three and it's second down that first down completion only netted him three second and seven now the first carry for Ty Montgomery not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30 just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They're looking at a third and six here to start things out. Shotgun now for Rodgers. It's caught outright by Graham and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. His throw incomplete. Geronimo Allison, the target there. That'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute goal. To throw is Rodgers. And Rodgers is going to go down. He sacked. Levante David in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. First carry now for the BYU man. It's Jamal Williams. And at the 42-yard line here and brought down there. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. After a rare scoreless first half, these teams now just looking for something as the second half gets underway. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. 23 yards on the play. Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? All right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game, and he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders, and Deshaun Jackson made that big-time return. Back now in Tampa as we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. A first carry now for the rookie from SC. It's Ronald Jones. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Now Winston. Right side caught by Jackson. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Now a first down carry by Jones. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. 
And they will take a knee and set up what would be a potential game-winning field goal try. One back in the game. That's Jones, second and goal. And we are set for a great finish as that timeout comes in with two seconds to go in this football game. So now it all comes down to Chandler Catton Zero. Two seconds on the clock. This for the win. And it is good. He splits the uprights on the chip shot. And it'll be a hot time in Ebor.